In a moment, we will be discussing how to avoid four of the most common but avoidable problems plaguing many semantic endpoint deployments. First, we want to be able to validate that every endpoint has the semantic agent installed. Like most endpoint management solutions, SEP's architecture relies on agents installed on every managed endpoint in the organization. These agents must be configured accurately on each endpoint for the solution to be available and effective. Unfortunately, agent-based technologies are susceptible to a common weakness. Agents themselves can be disabled or missing, rendering the associated solution uselessly unavailable. Next, we want to validate that the five required services and processes associated with Symantec are configured and running correctly. If any one of these fails because it is stopped, it is a critical problem that the SEP console cannot remediate alone. And last, we want to validate that the signature file is up to date and within acceptable guidelines. Hi, my name is Paul Wallen with Promisec. In this session, I'm going to show you how Promisec's unique agentless technology provides 100% visibility and control of your endpoints, which can help you stabilize and improve your semantic endpoint protection experience. Let's get started. As you can see, I have selected six various hosts, which I've added to our inspection in the pane here. Now, as you can see, I can simply add a host name or an IP address if I wanted to inspect a machine individually. I can go over to a domain and I can import the Promisec uh, Active Directory. I can do the whole container, uh, or I can do a specific group, or an individual machine, or I could do by IP range. Doing it by IP range ensures that all machines on that network segment will be inspected, even if they are not part of the Windows domain or another security domain. So this will ensure that all and no host will be left behind. Next, let's take a look at the custom semantic configuration template that will define our inspection criteria and policies. This configuration template provides all the technical requirements we need to inspect the health and status of our SEP11 deployment. It includes all five of the required services and associated processes required for full SEP11 functionality as well as potentially useful registry information pertaining to semantic that will likely prove very valuable in the ongoing management and maintenance of your semantic deployment. The solution that we are going to use will leverage your existing domain or local admin credentials to inspect your network without having to utilize WMI, ActiveX, or dissolvable agents. Here we can see on our user define that we specifically have defined five critical processes that are installed on every SEP11 deployment to an endpoint. Here we can see SEP11 endpoint protection, the actual executable is RTV scan, uh, the event manager, live update, as you can see, very important. You can either put the full path in or the actual executable. Here as well as we have the SMC manager client as well for SEP11 and the settings manager. These are all the defined processes that will, we will report doing the point of inspection that will tell us very simply is the process up and running. Here we've also defined specific registry information as well that falls outside the SEP11 console. Here we can actually see what on the endpoint the SEP11 dat date is. Here we've drilled down into the registry with our registry builder. We simply have gone into the tools user defined in our scan objects and we have the ability to do an import of any registry information by kicking on HKEY local, bearing down onto the software. We can go all the way down into Symantec and any other issue that we want to find out that's going on with the registry. Here we have the ability to go in, find that information, and extrapolate it out by just simply right-clicking, look for both the value and data, and have it pre-populated. When we change this line to specifically say any, what we'll do at the point of inspection is the next time an inspection is done, it will report any value that's associated with a key. That's very important to find these things out. Here we can see that we're also inspecting for the SEP11 GUID. This is important because the GUID tells us that it is a managed host by the SEP11 console. Very important to make sure that your endpoints of SEP11 are being managed. Here we can check for the heuristic level. If we type in any, we'll either be returned a either binary 0 or 1, 0 being off, 1 being on, letting us know that the heuristic level. That's very important also to make sure that SEP11 live update is enabled as well. 
We can check for the product versions, de not depending on one specific key, but looking to make sure we can pull any product version of any semantic product, AV product installed. We can even look for the actual scan engine and server name. Here we've defined the services that need to be automatically and set on on the endpoint. Here we see the CEP11 endpoint protection, the event manager, the management client, and of course the settings manager. We don't have live update defined here under our services. Simply, it is a manual service that is on demand or put on a schedule. If we take a look now over on our configuration, we have the ability to automatically remediate at the same time at the point of inspection. As you know, an inspection only takes one or two seconds to inspect an endpoint. As you can, as you know, during the previous module, we show the speed and the accuracy of the specific PromiseX solution. Here we're going ahead and bringing up our repair options and as you can see if we come across one of the uh, services being turned off we have the ability to uh, repair the service here we can on the endpoint we can make sure that the on access scanner is on the event the client event manager is uh, repaired if it is turned off the management client and the settings manager these are very important at the point of when we're doing the inspection to remediate on the fly to repair important things to maintain the security posture of the CEP11 endpoint. More than just another monitoring and inspection tool, this solution provides robust auto and right-click remediation capabilities that can probably make quick work of some of the most challenging CEP11 deployment problems. Here we can see that these are the results that are returned to our console, our inner space console, after the inspection. As we can see, we have the ability to sort any one of these columns by last date, host name, IP address, object, and the status. So we can basically quickly go through and see what we have, or we can just sort it on the last date of when it, it occurred. Here we find the information that occurred on our CEP11 deployment here. Here's what we see. We find that we have a antivirus definition that was last updated on 12.17. We have the ability to do actions and do what we call right-click remediation. Here I have the ability, because I've predefined a few of the uh, things that I need to help remediate my enterprise and my deployment of CEP11, I can do a system reboot as an example. I can actually go down to the endpoint and do a live update. I'm not going to kick it off for the purposes of this demonstration, but I have the ability to do that. Under the actions, I have defines some four predefined actions that we can take. Via a host not responding, I can right click, send down a ping command. I can also do a trace route. I can also, if it's pending a system reboot, go ahead and issue a reboot and do this all remotely. If I find out my uh, semantic signatures aren't up to speed, I can always click off the live update, have the client go out to the website and update itself. Here we're not trying to take away from the CEP11 console, we're only trying to enhance this tier 1 security product. Here we find that CEP11 is not deployed on this endpoint by we're not getting any of the uh, processes, we're not getting any of the registry finds, so I have the ability to do right click remediation and install software directly down to it. I can browse to the endpoint or to a share that's available with the installer, go out, click on the setup, open it, and then I have the ability to kick it off. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for the point of the demonstration, but as you can see, it's going to go ahead and distribute CEP11 to that endpoint that doesn't have it. Here as well, I can see whatever processes are running on the endpoint as well. This gives me clear visibility into what is happening onto the endpoint. Within there as well, we do have the ability to sort all this information together. Very important that this information that we've got helps us in understanding our CEP11 deployment. Here we can see the firewall state is set to zero, meaning that it's off. Here we're checking that the heuristic level is set to a level two. We also see that live update is enabled because of a one. Here we also see the product version. We also see the actual version and build numbers. These are very important information that is delivered back to you in a matter of seconds and accurately that tells you the posture of your CEP11 deployment in your enterprise. Here is the 
Inner Space Manager, we have defined our semantic configuration here. We have just kicked off an inspection, and as we can see, an inspection takes just a second or two for an endpoint to be completely inspected. There is no user impact to the endpoint during the inspection, thus inspections can be conducted during normal business hours with minimal change management. By not having an agent, deployment times are limited just to a few hours, not days, weeks, or months. Thanks for watching. For a free, no obligation trial of this solution, contact us via email at sales at promisec.com or visit us on the web at www.promisec.com.